Hello, sir. How are you? Hi, mate. How it's a pleasure are you? to meet Good you. To see you. Are you Glad enjoying our sunny afternoon in Bournemouth? It's always like this down here. It is always like this down here. Brilliant. We've got heat waves and everything. <laughs> and beaches. <laughs> beaches. Um, now, you obviously were the ex director of ITV. Can I ask you a quick question? Who was your favourite presenters to work with? My favourite. Uh, actually, I really liked. Uh, it sounds. Uh, it sounds a bit uh, em embarrassing, but I did like Simon a lot. Simon Cowell. Yeah, uh, and I worked with him a reasonable amount. Um, you never knew entirely what he was thinking about anything, um, but he was just really good. And um, it, funny enough, despite his reputation, which I suppose is a bit fierce, personally, he never liked to argue with you. You know, if he had something bad to tell you, he'd get somebody else to do it. So he was, he was just fun, fun to be around. Oh, fantastic. And was there anyone in particular who you didn't perhaps enjoy working with as much? No, uh, they were they were all um, they were all kind of uh, different creatures. I like Sharon, although um, uh, you know th there's a funny thing about the X Factor, uh, which is that the um, there's the show that we all see at home. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a show in studio, and then there's another show that goes on behind the scenes in the dressing rooms. And getting into the dressing rooms to speak to the judges. Um, it was like getting into Fort Knox. You know, there were kind of armed guards almost outside everybody's dressing room. And the one that was really difficult to get into was Sharon's. Oh. And it was really difficult. You could make an appointment and get into... I mean, I was director of television at ITV, so I had a reasonable, reasonable access. Yeah. You could get into Simon's dressing room, provided you pre-booked. It's a bit like sort of booking a holiday. You know, <laughs> I'd like to uh, spend uh, a few days uh, in Simon, Simon Cow's dressing room. The others, a few days. Uh, yeah, well, days. Or whatever. Whole you know, days. Or, or an hour. <laughs> or, or half now. His mum was always in there. Really? Yeah, sweet. His mum was always in there, and she would always welcome you and offer you a sandwich, which is what Jewish mothers do, apparently. <laughs> um, but Sharon, you could, I'm not sure I ever went into Sharon's room. I chose, uh, with my youngest kid, uh, a pair of shoes for Kate Thornton to wear to present the live final the last wow. year that she did it. That That's was a cool incredible. thing to do. Yeah, I mean, she couldn't walk in them, but, you know, <laughs> they, they looked nice. They were stunning. Thank yeah. you very much. Now, you obviously have just spoke quite a lot about X Factor. Yeah. We've got Britain's Got Talent. Yeah. We've got more and more reality <laughs> TV shows cropping up more and more, which especially a lot to do with, with voices and singing and, and talents and things like that. Do you think that there's becoming too much of a dilution of talent in, in England? Do you think that we're getting too much talent contests like constantly bombarding us or do you think it's just the right amount well at the moment um uh you know the audiences clearly love those shows mm -hmm. so uh, i suspect they're here for a while i mean there's a bit of a hoo-ha at the moment um for those of you who've got time to read the sun um or the guardian even today which is a, a story that says um x factor lost two million viewers well, it's still a 10 or 11 million show mm -hmm. so even if it does lose two million views it's still enormous there's a big new bbc show starting in uh, the new year called the voice which is another twist yep. on the talent show yep. uh britain's got talent shows no signs of waning i think the, the only thing i'd say is that those smaller channels that think they, they can just kind of um muscle in on this are going to struggle it really seems to me to be a big mainstream ITV1, BBC1 kind of thing. Okay. So if you could go into any reality TV show ever, Strictly Come Dancing, Big Brother, uh, any of them... Well, I, I'll, I'll tell do? you a secret. I, I actually uh, appeared in an episode of The Apprentice, right. which was not for broadcast. It was made for the Edinburgh TV Festival. Right. Uh, and it was only one episode, and only one person was sacked by Alan Sugar, and that was me. Incredible. <laughs> yeah, really embarrassing. The whole industry saw it. Um, no. I thought that was really good, but he, he didn't think I was very good. <laughs> and we had to sell uh, goods on QVC. That was the challenge. Good. Uh, Love that. I thought I was quite good at that. But he, I don't know, maybe I said something slightly out of place. Um, but I'd like to have another go at um, The Apprentice. The Apprentice. Yeah, because I think The Apprentice is a great show. And I can't sing, can't dance, uh, or not very well. Okay. When I haven't drunk anything but I, I think The Apprentice is my kind of show. Surely with alcohol it helps you dance. Yeah it I does. Yeah, apparently I'm told. Not that anybody <laughs> here would know that I suspect. No we're all sober. Everyone yeah. at this university yeah. is a sober student. So I've heard yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now obviously we are at university we are at BU station it's a student run station. Um, what is the future of jobs for people that come to university? Obviously we've got. It's over. 
It's over. Yeah. No jobs. No jobs at all. No. Never mind. But have a good time while you're here. <laughs> I feel like the four horsemen are about to just come over my shoulder, just running no, down. No, I, I actually think that because the training is getting better and better, uh, and the kind of skills that you learn uh, at a place like this uh, are really relevant to the industry, I'd be pretty confident that if you get your heads down, uh, you do a bit of work between going out, um, that, that actually media television is only expanding at the moment it's not certainly not contracting and it's expanding in many different ways i think that i think the prospects are actually pretty good because even if people haven't got any money mm -hmm. which they may not have for the next five or ten years at least they, they they're going to watch tv yeah absolutely so that's good that's good good that's news good for, for somebody. everyone good news for everyone's somebody. a winner <laughs> everybody's a winner perfect no worries thank you so much for having Pleasure. a chat to me and taking some time out of your very busy simon cowell and sharon osborne <laughs> diary incredible <laughs>